So can a drug alone end obesity, or are there more sustainable ways of managing weight? With me to discuss that is endocrinologist Dr. Sandeep Ruda, who is in private practice in Johannesburg. Dr. Ruda, thanks very much for making the time to join us today. Thanks, Mia. How does the mechanism work? How does this drug get you to lose weight? It will help to reduce um, hunger and increase satiety, that sense of fullness. It tends to lower the thermostat for weight regulation. So a lot of people try and lose weight through lifestyle modification, and they will with consistency and effort, but they reach a threshold whereby they can't get beyond that. This is where the physiology of the body fights back through becoming acclimatized to the old higher weight, you see? So the drug will help you go beyond your threshold for losing weight through consistency in lifestyle as well and set that thermostat down a bit. What happens if you stop taking the drug? When you stop the drug, the weight goes up again. So generally it's shown that it goes up, but we don't have long-term data on follow-up of those patients. Certainly if you um, stop the drug, there's going to be some weight gain. In addition to semaglutide, there's another drug that you can use that is registered in South Africa. Tell us a little bit about that and side effects. Uh, semaglutide is not registered for weight loss in South Africa. It is not registered as an obesity. The version available in South Africa is registered for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. The approved drug is its predecessor called liraglutide. Uh, the dosage is given as a daily dose as opposed to a weekly dose, and weight loss is in the region of you know, 8 to 10 percent over a period of a year. Side effects in this class are standardized and we know them. The most common are gastric side effects. So nausea, vomiting, diarrhea are the more common ones. Most patients develop tolerance over a period of a month as we titrate the dosages. But the side effects with the newer ones, semaglutide, are slightly more in the gastric space. But you also develop tolerance if you do it slowly and properly. And then there is, in the package insert, an allusion to uh, gallbladder issues like gallstones, though they're quite rare. Pancreatitis has been stated. Um, and then there's a package label warning about thyroid cancer as well. You've got some patients on weight loss injections. Mm -hmm. How do you choose who qualifies for it? Um, the drugs are indicated for patients who meet the criteria, uh, body mass index over 30, definitely, now BMI over 27 with a weight-related complication like hypertension, high cholesterol, uh, or diabetes or prediabetes. But when prescribing a drug also, you know, we got to first interview the patient, look at the psychological state, access to resources, um, cost of care, which is a big issue because these drugs are very costly and you need the patient to be able to afford it for a longer term. I want to ask about the price, but mm. before I get to that, you mentioned body mass index mm. and how that determines who qualifies for the drug or yeah. who can be considered. Mm. Can you just break down what is a BMI yeah. and those figures that you mentioned, what that indicates? The body mass index is an index of risk based on your weight in kilograms over your height squared in, in meters squared. And uh, basically, it's not really an assessment of how much fat, excess fat, the body is carrying. It's a measure of risk. The higher your BMI, the more at risk you are of all the complications of obesity. And what does your BMI need to be if you want to qualify for this drug? So according to the guidelines currently, body mass index over 30, which is classified as obesity, qualifies. A body mass index of over 25 is overweight, but 27 or more with a complication like cholesterol qualifies as well. To get back to price, what does it cost per month to get this type of injections? Mm -hmm. And do people stay on them? Do they manage to take them consistently? So I can tell you with the approved obesity GLP-1 receptor agonist, which is liraglutide in this country, which we've been using for some years now, it's been available and registered for obesity. The current cost out of pocket, and it's not covered by funders, is between three and a half to 4,000 rand a month. We see dropout rates because of after a while it's unaffordable. So after a year, most patients are starting to come off the medication or they feel I've reached my weight loss goal. The reported rates in trials are around 20 to 30 percent. So that's quite a high dropout rate. In clinical practice, it's probably a bit higher. 
patients get a bit tired of the nausea uh, if they haven't acclimatized to it. And just to clarify for our viewers, the semaglutide injection for weight loss you're referring to is Wigovi, right? That is not yet yes, registered. It's the trade yet. name abroad, yes, correct. Dr. Ruda, thanks very much for making the time to talk to us today.